My name is Tony Catch Binstock, and today is December 8th, 1997. And today I'm honored to be interviewing Lena Jackson in Wheeler, Texas, United States of America, and the interview is being conducted in English. Would you give me your name, please? Lena Jackson. And what was your name at birth? Gut Steinbach. Did you have any other names or nicknames that anybody called you? Yes, they used to call me Hummel. And what does that mean? Bumblebee. <laughs> and your birth date? December the 29, 19... 29. No, December the 10th, 1929. And your age today? Today is 67. Where were you born? I was born in Pappenrode, Germany. Did you grow up there? No. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Berlin. How old were you, move, were you when you moved there? Where? To Berlin. To Berlin? I don't know. A little I girl? I was just a little baby. Do you remember your um, address in Berlin? Yes. Schlesischen Bahnhof, 87. That's where we used to live. Tell me about your neighborhood, what it was like where you grew up. <clears throat> Great big houses and stores, and we lived right in the middle of all that. Was that in the center of Berlin? No on the outskirts. Was there a particular district that, that you lived in that you No. Know? And um, tell me about your neighborhood. There were all big houses or were there apartment houses too? Apartment houses too. And how many lived in your house? Well, there was my mother, my mother and I and my brother and my little niece and my sister, me. Where was the rest of your family? In the concentration camp. Do you know what year they went? No, I was a little, a little girl when they came and said, let's get out of here, get out. Did your family uh, move around um, or did you stay in one place before you moved to Berlin? Well, when we uh, was in there, in Berlin, <clears throat> we went to Magdeburg because my father, they put my father in the concentration camp. In Magdeburg? Yeah. No. They put my father, my father and my two oldest brothers in the concentration camp in Magdeburg. You're right. And you li were in Berlin at that time? Yeah, my that, well, when my father and my brothers went to uh, the concentration camp, we went to Berlin. Okay. Was your family very close-knit before that? Were you close family? We always been a close family. What did your family do together for fun? I don't know, there wasn't too much we could do it, you know, in the, in the, a big town like that, go to the movies together, or sing together at night, pray, things like that. What languages do you, do you speak? I speak, I speak a little gypsy, American, and English. And what side of the family was uh, uh, a gypsy? Were both sides of your family gypsy? No, my father's sides. Do you remember before he left what kind of work he did? Huh? 
Do you remember w before your father left for the concentration camp, what kind of work did he do? My father? I don't remember. I was just little, you know. I, I never put no attention to it. Daddy went to work and that was it. And Hitler came to power in 1933. What did you know about that? Did you know what was going on and how things were changing? Yes, we knew that things were changing, but all we knew was we couldn't go in a store without saying Heil Hitler, you know. And uh, things things were changing very much. We had a, if we wanted some bread or butter or something, we had to stand in line for hours to get it with a little card. What color was your card? I don't know. It was just different colors. They had a, a different one for bread, a different one for butter. Did you have did you have to carry any other kind of ID card, a pass like gray or blue or brown? Did you have to carry a pass around with Not you? Not me. My mother did. Do you remember what color hers was? White, I think. Little beige. Beige. Did it have anything on it? Did it have, like I know the Jews had a, a Star of David. Did the gypsies have to have anything no, on that No, we had nothing. Did, were you able to go to school? Yeah, I went to school. What city was that in? What they were telling me? What, what city was, where did you go to school in? I went to Berlin. And what were they telling you? Making jokes. You know. What did they say? Well, in German there is a thing they say. It's sick, suck, cigarette, pack, for fem, finish, cream, tobacco. For fem finish colon, cigarette ham gestolen. What does that mean? Well, they always said the gypsy was stealing. You know? But it, it, it I mean, there are different Mexicans, different gypsies, you know, they are, they are different in, in everything. But uh, we never stole anything in our life. My mother would have really let me have it if I would have. So, so they they this this what they said to you was was kind of a mean thing to gypsies. Yeah. Did they hurt ever hurt you any of the school kids or? or, or <clears throat> well, when they changed my name from Lena, from Root to to Lena, that's when they hurt me. D who changed your name? Well, my mama, because the kids didn't like where we lived, they said, root is mean. Isn't that silly? So they changed my name from root to Lena, and I'm happy. Did your parents change your name then? Yes. So you were born with the name of Ruth? Yeah. Who? Oh, Rue. Yeah. How many years did you go to school? In Not very much. I think just five years altogether. And did did there come a time when you couldn't go to school, when they wouldn't let you go to school? Yes, the time when we had to go in, in the concentration camp, we couldn't go to school at all. Before that, did you ha were you able I to go? I went to school. Were there Jews in your school? Yeah. How did you know that they were Jewish? They all wore a, a star. And did the kids make fun of them too? Yes. What did they say to them? Do you remember? They always said, you stinking Jews. You and know, I don't know why, because the Jews were cleaner than they did. They was. Were there Jewish kids in your neighborhood? Yeah, we we had Jews in 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 uh, Amer uh, Jews in uh, 
everybody, you know. There wasn't too many different people in Germany, I tell you. Because they try to keep it so clean and so nice, and look what they got now. How did they know you were gypsy? They didn't. I opened up my big mouth one day. Tell about that. I told one of my best friends that I was part gypsy. She kept saying, you got such a beautiful black hair. And I said, well, that's because I'm a gypsy. <laughs> part gypsy. And then, then what and happened? They're all heck pro clothes. <laughs> really? What else happened? Oh, they followed me home, throwing stones at me, all kinds of stuff. So my mother said, the heck with it. And what did she do, or what was she able to do? I cried. That's the only thing I could see. You know, what can you do? Little children. How old were you then? Oh, seven, eight. Was your, uh, were you in the midst of town, like were there uh, radios and, and um, phones in your house, in your apartment? No, we didn't have a, f mm -hmm. no, we didn't have a phone. How about a radio? We had a radio. Did you ever Hitler, hear Hitler speak over the radio? Yes, and we cursed him out every time he did. Did you ever see him in person? In person, just one time in the concentration camp. He came there. Tell about that. Well, when he came in <coughs> in the concentration camp, he, uh, they, I don't know why they did that, that that changed my mind about him a little bit, you know. He, uh, they cleaned up the place. They cleaned it all up, and they said, if he asks you if you get enough food, you better say yes. Because if you don't, you're going to be dead. What did you think about him before that? Before that, I thought he was a rotten creep. But be after that, I, di I thought, why? Why would they say this if he is that bad? You know? He was friend a friendly man. That's all I can, can say. Did he speak to you? No. No, I was hiding. <laughs> hiding behind my sister. Let's go back to before you went to the camp again. Tell me your father's name. I forgot to ask that. Adolf. Adolf Steinbach. And your mother's name? Adelaide Steinbach. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? Well, I had, I think we were seven. Seven of us. Do you remember the all of their names? Yeah, there was Georg, Kurt, and uh, Walter, Walter. And then there was Hedwig, and Rosemarie, and uh, Hedwig, Rosemarie, and <coughs> I'm sorry, I... It takes a, a lot out of me, you know, trying to think. They say this all. Hedwig, Rosemary, and Avanda. And me. And when your brothers went to the concentration camp with your dad, who was with you and your mother then? Which, your Amanda and you and who else? Court, um, Walter, and Av Avanda. 
Were there, were you identified at all with the gypsy community? Did you go, used to go to meet, to uh, gatherings with the gypsies? No. We just stayed at home, you know. Even when you were little? Yes. Before they knew you were gypsy? Yeah. Did you know who the gypsy leaders were? There was no leader. They were just like here, you know. I mean, I meant in the community. If they, if there was a gypsy community, did you know if there was a gypsy community? There wasn't none. And what was your religious identity? In Pangalish, um, Protestant. Do you remember the day your father was taken? Yes. Tell about that, please. It was horrible. We all, they came in late at night and they said, take your, take your clothes and let's go. You know, just what you got on, put your clothes on and let's go. And we all were crying and said, be quiet or we take you too. Did you think your dad would come back? I thought they're gonna kill him. That's what I thought. And they took him to Auschwitz. No, they took him to Buchenwald. Do you know? Do you remember when the Olympics came to town to Berlin, the 1936 Olympics? Do you remember that? We didn't know nothing about that. Did you ever hear of Marzahn, a, a, a place outside of Berlin? Did you ever hear of that name, a gypsy camp or anything? Mm -mm. I'm not sure if I'm saying the pronunciation right. Zigerner Lager? Zigerner Lager? What does that mean? Gypsy uh, uh, conversation. No, gypsy camp. That's what it means. But I never heard of that. You never heard of that? Uh-uh. When you stayed in Berlin, then how did your mother support your family? I don't know, to tell you the truth. I don't know. Maybe we are fair. I don't know. Did you ever have to help out the family working? No, I had to do all the, home, the housework and everything. And how did your mother get along after your father left? Well, my mom had liver cirrhosis. And she was pretty sick. And she had one operation after another. Operations. They, they made holes in her stomach and they, the water just ran out. And we, we were watching it. And then she just died. Liver cirrhosis. And you were, what year was that? When I was around seven. Who took care of you after that? We stayed with my uh, mother's sister. And they were not gypsy, right? Were they gypsies? Yeah, half. Half gypsies. And did... Really, there was, I never thought anything about gypsies or anything. We lived like normal, you know, normal people. I thought gypsies were living in wagons and horses, and I saw it once on TV, but I never thought anything, you know. And then what happened to you? when? When were you taken? We went to Magdeburg when my mother died. My mother died of liver cirrhosis. And then we went to Magdeburg. My grandmother came and got us. She lived in Magdeburg? Yeah. And when she got us, we lived there for around two, two years. And then the SS came and they took Get, get going. Had you seen SS before? 
on the streets? Yes, but the 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 thing on the arm it didn't mean nothing to me, you know, like a a private or something like that. So it didn't mean nothing to me. Did you did you know the difference that there were men who wore black uniforms and brown uniforms, or did they all look like soldiers to you? Yeah. They all wore the same blue uniform, I think. Blue. Dark or light? Well, it was like the fatigues, you know, here. Did you ever see any other Nazi? Yeah, we saw a lot of them. And what did you have to do when you saw them? Hide. Run home and hide. So tell about the day that you were taken. What time of day was it? It was early, early in the morning. Maybe two, three. Dark outside? Yeah. And they came in. And they didn't just knock on the door and came in. They slammed the door open. They said, get your clothes on and let's go. And they, my grandmother said, can we pack a suitcase? No. Just what you got on. So that's what we did. We got our clothes on and go. I was happy. I thought... I thought that something exciting happened, you know. I What did I know? <laughs> and you were about how old then? Or do you remember the year? Nine or ten, or close to ten. What, what year was that then? Well, I'm 67 now. So you were nine, so it was about 1939? Yeah. Do you remember what time of year it was? Well, it wasn't a winter yet. And where did they take you? And they took us to the train station. Tell about that. And they put us in to the... Uh, it wasn't a train station where you sit, you know. There was a whole bunch of people in in the it was just like uh where you put the cows where you put the cows and, and horses and that's where they put us. There was a lot of people in there. And they put us in there. And everybody asked where are we going? Shut up. Well and we went uh, in the train a little bit, and then they stopped, and then we went with the train a little bit, and then they stopped, you know, and they gave us something to eat sometimes, and sometimes they don't. What did they give you to eat? A, a, small, a small piece of bread. Anything to drink? Water. I was glad for that. We were, I thank God for everything I got. That's all I got to know. I thank them for everything. And maybe that's why I'm here. How many days do you think you were on the train? Oh, maybe 10 days. 10, 9, 10 days. Did you ever get off the train? When they stopped? No. Did they ever open the doors? We were just a bunch of cows. How many do you think were in there? In that train? I don't, that is a thing that I don't... Ugh, terrible. They had to go to the bathroom in there and everything. The little kids screaming for hunger and... I don't know how people can do that, you know? Really, how can they do that to little children? Little children got deadly sick. Did you get sick? No, I wasn't sick. 
who all was with, were you all together with your family? I was with my little brother, my grandma and grandpa, and uh, uh, my little niece and my sister. Did you know who the other people were on the train, on the cattle car? No. Were they, did they have the uh, Jewish star were any, uh, with the Jewish star, or were they all gypsy, do you know? There was people with stars. On your train, t I mean, yeah. on your cattle car, too? Yeah. Any others that you knew? Did you know anybody? Did your folks know any, Grandma know anybody? Yeah, I think my grandfather knew a few people. And then when, where did you, did they ever tell you where you were going? Yes. They said, you're going to the concentration camp, Auschwitz. And when the door opened? When there we was, right in the middle of it. Describe that for me. That scared me half to death, I tell you. See, the, the train went right into the concentration camp. And uh, they said, get out. Some of us couldn't even walk, stand up. Because, you know, sitting there for so long, you couldn't, so many people in there, how could you stand up? He's, uh, when we got out, he said, stand in uh, five by five. Stand in a line. One five in front of me, five, you know what I mean. Can I have a little more? We'll take care of that. We'll get that phone off the hook. Just take Thank it you. off. Bitch is my daughter. Okay. So you, that's fine. You didn't stop, did you? No. no. <laughs> when the phone rang then, um, we had to stop the tape, so we'll continue. You were standing five. We five all by got five. out, and we stayed five by five, families. You, you know. were with your fam, okay? Yeah. Now, if if you are one of you, you were four, and, and five was your family, you had to stand in the other line. So we stayed close with my grandpa and grandpa, grandma and grandpa. And then what happened? And then they took us to the barracks. Oh my! I tell you, I never thought this I could ever ever go through this. So that we went into that great big barracks, big, and it said there, uh, it had great big, like bunk beds, three, but big, like, uh, like from this side of the, the dining room set to the end of the dining room set. And there was nothing else than wood. Tell, uh, you said you were standing in, fan with your family of five. Did you see anybody standing there? Was there any German standing there telling you where to go and what to do? Yes, SS men and women's. And what did they tell you? They said, when you are family, stay close together. So they marched us to the, to the barracks. Did you see what happened to the Jews? Well, they... They went this way, we went this way. Did you see what if they did anything different with the women and children, the Jewish ones? No. They took them in the other concentration camp and us to, to the barracks. Okay, so then you said you started to t tell about the barracks. Before you, did, were you taken right to the barracks or were you registered? No, we wasn't registered. They just put us in there. They said, if there is five in the family, go in the top bed or in the middle or in the bunk, in the bottom. So we went in the bottom, and that was a bad thing. Why was that bad? Because everybody wet the bed. It went right through us. We had two blankets with four, five people, one for the bottom and one to cover up. That's what it. That's it. Did you? Did they ever take you in and give you showers or uh, shave your head? 
Yes. First, after they uh, did this, you know, they, the next day they came and they gave us the number. Okay. Will you wait one second and put your arm up so the camera can see your number? What is your number, please? Five seven four. And what's the what's the letter in front of that? C. And what does that stand for? Do you know? Gypsy. So they gave you that, and what else did they do? They gave us the number. They said, "Don't you don't go by your name no more. You go by your number. If we call you, we call you." Five seven four. Then that's what we did. We listened to the number. Did you say they did shave your hair? And they did. They they. After they gave us the number. I passed out. I I don't know. It hurt. You know. I, I passed out. They get. They took us to this. They called it sauna. Like a great big barracks, and it had a bunch of showers. Sticking out in the, on the top. First of all, they wore like a, a basketball. The benches like that, you know. And they made you take all your clothes off, naked. Men, women's, children's. Together. And then, they put the heat on so high that you almost passed out. And then... We were naked, and then they put the ice cold water on. And uh, we was freezing then, <laughs> and uh, after that they just gave us one of those big old striped dresses. I forgot to ask you, or when we were talking about when they took you that night, when they came that night, did they let you take anything with you? No, just what we had on. Did you have any other belongings or anything else that you had with you? Jewelry. You had jewelry? Yeah, I had the, the earrings my mother gave me and told me to hold on to it. We, I had a lot of nice jewelry for my mother, but they took it all, you know. I thought it isn't worth it to get killed over it. So I took those little, they were like uh, little butterflies. Granaten, they're dark red, pretty. I like this, you know. And uh, I took them; they were just little, and I stuck them in in my mouth. And I don't know what make me think if they were in my mouth, they ain't gonna, you know. But he said, "Open up your mouth." Boy, did I got a whipping for that. For having the earring. And he took them away. Was it a man or woman who beat you? A man. What did he beat you? What did he hit you with? He had one of those whips. He hit me with. What did you think was happening to you? I thought, my goodness, he's mean. They hit you on the back, in the face, all over. I thought to myself, oh, Mom, I wish you wouldn't have told me to save this, you know. But I tried to keep them for her, you know. They were supposed to go all the way down in the family. And she got it. They took them. And you know what they did with them? After they put me through poor heck, he threw them on the floor and stepped on them. It was mean. So... He took everything, and then we got one of those long dresses. And, oh boy, this big, you know. Some of them were too little, some of them were too big. And big old shoes, wooden, wood on the bottom, the stick on the top, leather, no socks. So what we did is my sister, she took her teeth and and tore the dress a little bit on the bottom and tore the whole bottom off. 
this much and made me a belt. And for her to at least be kept warm, you know. And we wore it like that. Which sister was that? Avanda. She just, she said, you can never wear that. I would have fell over it. Too big, you know. But she, she always helped me. Oh, she got more beatings for me. Poor little thing. She went once, she found a, a little sweater and she, she took it and she gave it to me. And they asked me, where did you got this? I wouldn't squeal on my sister, you know. And I said, I found it. Well, where did you find it? Back there. They finally, she said, I did it. I gave it to her. Oh, my Lord. She got it. That poor little thing. Yeah. Was she older or younger than you? Older. How much, do you think? Oh, at least 10 years. Was she married or anything when she... Uh... She is, the, she is the, uh, the one that we took care of her little daughter. Where was that? In the camps? Out, out of the camp and in the camp. Because she was always working. So we took good care of the little girl. She, she used to call my mother mama. And did she come into the camp with you, into Auschwitz, the little girl? Mm hmm But my sister, too, you know. My sister, too. So there was your, your uh, grandmother, grandfather, your brother, you and, and sister, and the little baby, and any other relatives? Mickey. We called her Mickey because she looked just like a little Mickey Mouse, you know. <laughs> just like I call the one little one up there, I call her Toonie Lou. She looks like a little cartoon. <laughs> so Mika was was with you, the little baby, mm -hmm. and was the rest of were you all um, anybody else from your family with you in the in that barracks? No. Oh yeah, there were hundreds of people. In I meant field. your family. No. Just us. But Amanda and Mika. Mm -hmm. Did you have to do any work there? Yes, they uh, took us out in the morning, early, early. No food, no drink, no nothing. They counted us, then they marched us over to the other concentration camp. And they cut out pieces of, just like that, you know, pieces of uh, grass. They sell that kind here, don't they? They sell that, that grass. <coughs> Excuse me. And they made us carry it over there and put it in front of the SS quarters. So they have it nice, you know. Put it all over. Boy, it took a long time to do that. You had to carry the pieces of grass? Yeah, big. It, do uh, it on the bottom. Like sod? Yeah. And was your camp, do you remember if you had a barracks number? No. Does, I don't remember the barracks number. Does Camp B or number 2E mean anything to you? They had a number on there, but I surely don't remember it. It's, I'm, all I was thinking about, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. <laughs> That's it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, what did you do? Any other kind of work there? In well, Auschwitz? when we, when the Russians came in, in 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 Auschwitz, they took us out and took us to Wolkenburg. How long had you been in Auschwitz at that time? Maybe two, two and a half years, two years. Well, before you tell us about Wolkenburg. Is there anything else that you remember about Auschwitz? You did the grass. Any other kind of work? No. We had a clean... Well, I don't so much. I was so little, you know, but uh, we had to clean all that stuff, you know, for the SS and everything. 
Did you go ever go into the SS quarters where they lived? Yeah. What was that like? They lived like the kings. Can you describe what they lived like, what their houses were well, like? Well, they had nice blankets and nice, you know, things I wish I had. That's what they had. Did they have kitchens? And, or did you clean no, or cook for them? No, they had kitchens, but the, the prisoners were cooking for them. Did you ever have that kind of job? No. I didn't know how to cook. I was too little. And how about others in your family? Do you know what kind of jobs they had? My grandma and grandpa were pretty old. And my sister. Yeah, she cooked sometimes. So then the, you said the Russians came, and how were you taken to Württemberg? Well, they took us. The Russians, they said the Russians are coming. We have to leave the camp. So we said, why? And they said, don't ask no questions. Well, we didn't. So we just got ready, and they took us in that feed wagon again. Just filled us in there. Lots of people. Yeah, lots and lots and lots. And some of them were sick. They had typhoid and, you know. So uh, we went from there to Wolkenburg. That was um, it was a little it was a little town like Wheeler. And it had a, a big factory in it. And we had to make um, things for the airplanes. We had to make, like screws, pipes. Did you all work together, your family? Yeah. We sat on a chair. You know, the great big iron, like a plate, like a, a barbecue, you know what I mean? Like in, in the restaurants. And then we had to put that little piece of iron on there and push your foot, and it made a, a hole in it. So I didn't ask no questions. I found out as little as I was, the little I asked, the little I got beaten. So I just shut up and did what they asked of me. And then I made, Christmas came up. And I asked some old lady that worked there and was not a prisoner if she had any old rags I can use. She said, yeah, I got a lot of them. And I made a doll. I made a doll for that other little girl that was a little older than me for Christmas. And the, uh, the SS woman asked me, I told her if she could give that to that little girl for Christmas. She said, where did you got this? I said, I made it. I said, the lady gave me the material and I made it. And she said, can you make me one? So here I ended up making around 30 of them for all the SS people. Full for hair, you know, and, and, and then, then they gave me like a magic marker and like a raggedy end doll. And I made them all one. And then she said, wouldn't you like to have one, Lena? I said, yes. And she said, well, make yourself one. And I made myself one. So I had my little doll. I carried it all over, all over. Were you able to celebrate Christmas then? No, we didn't celebrate Christmas. No. But the, the, the old lady, she asked the SS woman if she could give me some. See, in Germany, they don't have turkey. When I was little, we used to have goose. 
goose. So the old lady said if she could make a goose and bring it for me, for my family and me. And the SS woman said it wouldn't be fair. She was one of the good ones, SS woman. She said it would not be fair because then all the other ones want some too and t it gets into a big thing, you know. So I s told her, I said, well, she's right. I wouldn't want to sit there and eat turkey, eat goose while the other ones are looking at me. I couldn't do it. Who was the woman who could bring you the goose? Was she a civilian or was she in the... Uh, was she German so a troop or something? She was a German. And a she lady was a and a civilian or a military? A, ci a civilian. They were, were working with us, civilians. But she did sneak me, though, a big bag of cookies. So. And, did, and who brought you the uh, material for the other $30? That old lady. God, all she said to you, I give you all the material you want. So I did it, and the thread, and the needles, and everything. Where did you, at that camp, where did you sleep? What were the barracks like there? Well, we slept usually on the floor, a blanket, and on the floor. Was it a big barracks like Auschwitz? No, no, no. They were like uh, apartments there, right behind the uh, factory. And how many? Like an apartment house, you know, like that. Did your family stay in the, in the apartment together, or were you with others? With others. They just put so many in there, and then they said, that's it, close the door, and starts over again. Now, did, was it crowded like the cattle car? Yeah. Sure did. Did you? But was there a room to sleep on the floor? Did you have to sit up? What was that? No. No, they gave us enough room to, so we could sleep on the floor. Was anybody else from your family with you? My sister. What happened to your grandparents? They died in Auschwitz. Oh, they had died before? Mm-hmm. They died there because they couldn't take it no more. And what about Kurt? Wasn't he with you too? No, uh, Kurt, he died in Auschwitz. He had uh, malaria and died in Auschwitz. Before you were transferred to Wurttemberg? Before I was transferred to uh, Wurttemberg. So who were you with from your family then? My sister. Amanda? That's it. Yeah. What happened to her baby? She got burned alive. How did you know about that? Because I was right there. Tell about what happened. She was screaming, asking me to, to take her. And I told him, I said, please take me too. I said, don't let her die by herself. And they said, no, you can work yourself to that. You don't need to die yet. It wasn't easy. Who took her, Lena? I call them the devil. That's what I call them. They took that little girl and they stuck her in the oven. Beautiful little blonde-headed girl. Pretty blue eyes. <sighs> well, they are paying for it now. Oh, already paid for it. You told about the one SS woman who helped you. Anybody else ever help you? It's a man. Oh, it was a man? No, it, that was a woman. Oh. But there was a man on the dead march when we went from Auschwitz to Ramsbrück. No, from Wolgenburg to Ramsbrück. Okay, before you tell me about that then, I want to ask you about, did you ever have to wear a, a triangle on your uh, on your clothes? Did they ever give you a triangle to wear? No, we just had this number. N and no patch? No, no patch. So We just had uh, this number here, 
or here or on the back of our clothes. So besides your arm, you were numbered other than that. And what was the food like at Wurtenberg? Wurtenberg? Very bad. But at least we ate, you know. At least we ate. Did you have those lineups, the roll calls every day? Every morning, every night. At Auschwitz, too? Yeah. Did you ever get any clean clothes? Well, we had to wash it. How did you wash it? They had a, a big room with big wash tops where you scrub, you know. And we had to wash it. We had one to wear and one to wash. Anything else that you remember about that camp, what you did at that camp? Except that they killed that poor old uh, Czechish, Slovakic, Czech, Czech woman. Tell they about killed. that. Well, I guess she must have smoked. And the SS woman threw the cigarette. You know, after she smoked, she threw the cigarette butt away. And she picked it up. And the SS woman saw it and didn't say a thing, nothing. But I smoked it. Then the next day at lunchtime, she said, number so-and-so, stand up. Did you uh, pick up that cigarette? No. She was scared. I would say no, too. And then they said, yeah, who saw it? Nobody would say anything, you know. So uh, she finally admitted that they had a, all of us had a killer. What did you have to do? Every one of us had a beat her with the fists or a kick her until she was dead. Or the tin cups hit her with, you know. She was, she died. What did you think about that? I thought I wish I were dead. That's what I wished. Huh? But that's what we had to do, that poor old woman. I think she was better off than what we were. Did you see anybody else that was hurt? Huh? What other kind of things did you witness, good uh, or bad, that people that the Germans did? Well, the Nazis. The German did? soldiers they pick themselves. The girls sleep with them. They wanted to or not. Just come in, look. You, I'm glad I was little. It didn't happen to you then? Did it happen to anybody you knew? To my sister one time. That's it. They, picked, they had their choice. And you were going to say that you left on a death march. Tell about that. Well, we went from there to Ramsbrick, still on the trains, you know. And my sister, well, they stopped the train when the bombs were too bad. They stopped the trains. And they all ran away. And she kept saying, come on, come on. I said, no, I'm scared. She said, come on. I said, no, you go on, but don't come back either because they're going to kill you. So what she did, she ran off. And thank God, thank God that she did not come back and they didn't find her. This was your... Because there was a, a, a girl, two sisters, two, and they had to... The one sister had to dig a grave for the other one and put her in there and then cover her up. If I, if I would have done that to my sister, 
I don't know. I don't think I could do it. And nobody could help her. She had to do it all by herself. Poor little thing. They caught her. But they didn't get, get my sister. They were praying and praying. And they, they didn't catch her. Did you, kn did you know if they caught her or not? No. I did not. So you were... I mean, if they would have caught her there where we were, I would have known. But you didn't know what happened to her then? No, I did not know what happened to her. So you were by yourself then, no more family? Is no more right? family. Just God and me. Did you make any other friends? Oh, yeah, that was a big family then. We tried to help each other. But the only thing we ate then was uh, they had those little leaves, and they call it cuckoo blätter, and they were sour, and that's what we ate for for thirst. They gave us no water, so when we got sitting down, if we got sitting down, we ate like crazy those leaves. One hand a raw uh, oatmeal a day. That's it. On your walk on the, on the, the walk. death march. That's it. That's all we ever got at night. One hand a raw oatmeal. How long was the walk? We walked from early, early in the morning until somewhere almost dark. How many days did it take? I don't remember. I think around 10. You were talking about the death march from uh, Wurttemberg to Ravensbrück. Uh, I don't think I'm saying the words no, right. No, from Ravensbrück to Wurttemberg. Okay. Dachau. That's what it is. Okay. That was the death march. Death march, okay. You, you went to Ravensbrück on the train then. Did mm -hmm. I have that straight? You were going to, uh, ha well, let's see. How long do you think you were at the factory working in that little town of Wurttemberg? Maybe a little over a year. And you said you were eating the leaves. Well, how long did you stay at Ravensbrück, and what was that like? Ravensbrück wasn't very long. I think just a week or so. One thing I forgot to ask you, did you... Amongst the the other people with you, there were other gypsies. Mm -hmm. were Some you, of them were. Were you able to talk gypsy to them, and and so that the Germans didn't understand? Oh, you couldn't do that. Then they think you are a spy. See, you couldn't do that. And then I didn't know how to speak gypsy so good in the first place. I. I couldn't speak gypsy very really good. You understood the German, everything German said. Oh, yeah, I... At the other places, um, after Auschwitz, did you have a delousings, uh, like you talked about uh, showers, or, or when you washed your clothes, did you have any fleas or lice on your body? We couldn't have fleas or lice. We had no air. Shaved it all off. <laughs> did they did they keep shaving it off then? Yeah. How often did they shave you? Once a week, once every two weeks. Whenever they saw hair on you, they shaved it. And the, the, how about the different camps you were at? Was any place better or worse than as far as food was concerned? What kind of food you got? They're all the same. And how about where you slept? Anything? Well, in Ramsbrick, they had the smaller beds. There were just maybe three of us sleeping in one bed, in bed. Did you have blankets there, too? Yeah. Did you get new clothes and new shoes at different times? Shoes? No, no shoes. Those leather shoes you said you had? No, we, they were dead. They were gone. We had to throw them away. 
What did you do for shoes then? Nothing. I just walked bare feet. In the cold, in the snow too? Not in the snow. There wasn't no snow, as far as I know. In the winter time, I mean. Yeah. No, they gave us some in the winter time. But when we walked so much, we got those, what do you call those things you get in here? Grown paints, they call them, my mother always said they are grown paints. Well, I had some that were this big from walking, bare feet. And then at the bottom of my feet, I had blisters this big. And it was terrible, terrible. So my sister just cut a little bit more of her dress off and mine and wrapped it around my feet and tie them on there so, so they won't come off. That was before she, before she before escaped? Before she ran off. And you started to say about an SS man earlier when I, I had asked you. That was nice. Yes. That old man, yeah, he was, he was nice. When he got his food, he, I was the smallest one around there, the littlest one. He always came and he always said, here, he said, don't show the other ones. So I shared it with my sister. What did he give you? A piece of bread or whatever, you know. Whatever he could hide in his pocket. He was pretty nice. And those leaves that you were talking about. Cuckoo platter. So what time of year would that be then? Well, it was in the spring or in the fall. Because there wouldn't have been no leaves if if it was freezing, you know. Did you remember what year it was and what day it was or what holiday it was? Did anybody tell you the, when? The only time I knew what holiday it was, the only time I knew is when I made those little dolls. You never knew when it was Christmas or Easter after that? No. What else do you remember about the walk? Uh, well, I know this. We were hungry, we were scared, we... The walk, and... I don't know, we said... Hungry? I don't think I ever got over that. And you know, when I finally, when the Americans finally came in and gave us all the food we wanted, I couldn't eat it. I couldn't. The other ones, they just gobbled it down, a lot of them, you know, and they got the jello jaundice and sick, they got sick and... I couldn't. The only thing I could eat is an apple or an orange. They got sick. They died. Some of them died because they ate the grease fat. So you were telling about the, the death march from Ravensbrück to, to Dachau. Um, that was maybe in the spring of... Was that just before liberation? Before you were liberated? Yes. And then tell about going at Dachau, what you remember about that. Well, when we went to Dachau, I told you my sister ran away, didn't I? And they didn't catch her. They catched it, the, the, a lot, a lot of Germans, you know, German people, said they didn't know nothing about this. And they tried to sneak us food. But what good was it? If they gave it to us, the SS took it and ate it. We didn't know nothing about that, they said, you know. So, when they snuck us some in, at night, we, we hide it, you know, we hide it. How did they sneak it to you? Well, some old lady came in to give us water. If we... See, some, some, some of them people let us stay in the barn. 
They let her stay in the barn when it was raining. At their house? No, oh. on the way. On the way? Oh, they let her stay. They asked the SS if we can stay in the barn. And he said, yeah. Oh, my goodness, that what Christmas was. And uh, that's where they snuck us a little bit of food, too. They hid it underneath the straw. And you got to be in the barn sometimes? Yeah. We got in the barn, sleeping there. How many times did that happen? Oh, maybe three times. They were nice people. I thought anybody was nice who helped us, I tell you. I thank God for that. And these were the people on the way to Dachau, the German, German civilians? Yeah. Were they male or female usually? Huh? Were they women or men? Well, a family, you know. Both? Yeah. So when you got to Dachau then, what was that like? Well, when, when we got into Dachau, the Americans were there. Already they were there? Yeah. No, no. Two days we were without Americans, and then they came in. Two days you were without Americans or Germans? The Germans were still there, two days. So explain about that. Well, the Germans were still there, and they, they asked us to hide them. I just turned my back to them for what they did to us. You know, just said, I wouldn't help you for what you did. Because when we were on the dead march, the Americans flew down with the airplanes real, real low and threw us care packages down. But guess who ate it all? They did. They ate the whole, they took the packages, they say, they, it's poison, not to touch it. Then we saw them eat it. So the next time the Americans flew low, we said, no, 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 no. There's a lot of people got shot over that because we told them not to go no more. Why should they let them have all those chocolates and stuff, you know? And the Americans, they've been so mean to those poor people. I mean, you know. So they gave us, they sent no more packages then. And then... When we got to Taha, when we got in, they asked us to hide them. They tell them how good they was and everything. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. They couldn't shoot us no more because the war was over. See? So the Americans came in. Oh, my God, I tell you, that was really, really comical. Really that the German had to lead their motorcycles and their stuffed, and there was a poor old prisoner in that big old long dress he had on, and he, no hair, he, he sat on that motorcycle and the Americans couldn't find the camp. They couldn't find it. So he went out there and got him. That poor old man, I tell you, he risked his life and got it, got him. And they came in. And then, boy, we had it made. Tell me about, where were you when the Americans came in? Were you, what time of day was it, first of all? Daytime, it was daytime. And where were you? I was in the barracks hiding. Because they told us this. The Americans come in, they take us by the feet and hit us with the head against the wall, so we are dead. So I didn't know. I was hiding underneath the bed, and a colored man just walked in. Well, I crawled underneath the bed, and he took me by the feet and pulled me out. <laughs> and he said, he said, what do you do? He speak German a little. 
little German. What are you doing, Haydn? I said, you, are you going to kill me? In German. And he said, no, I would never kill you. I have a little girl just like you. And he took out the chocolate bar and gave it to me. And he set me on his lap and he cried. He, I never forget that. He cried. He said he wished he could take me home. I said, no, I have to go with my daddy. My poor father, he was looking all over for me. Well, let me ask you a couple more questions about uh, the, the camps, if I may. What else did you witness that you would like to tell about today? What other kinds of kindness or cruelty did you see? What I saw? Well, when Hitler came in, when he came in here, he was asking everybody how how bad it was. And and one woman, she held her hand up and she said, it's hell on earth. And she got a bullet right through the head. And we never heard anything about that anymore. But I know there was trouble about it. Did you saw lots of killing then? Oh yeah, lots of killing. Like when we walked on the dead much, and I couldn't walk anymore. Like my sister, she kept holding me up, you know, with the big blisters. She, uh, she said, instead of, <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. I think. What was I telling you? You telling me about on the death march that you had the blisters, and oh, I yeah. asked if you saw people killed. They, it, it, they just shoot them when they couldn't walk no more. They just said, "Sit down, sit down for a minute," and then they shot them right there in front of us. So any of us were scared to sit down anymore, you know. No matter what they did, what they, how how sick you was. Were you ever sick, in the camps and any of the camps? Oh yeah, I had typhoid, and I had malaria. And spotted fever. Did you ever get any medical help for it? No. You were never taken to a medical place or. Oh yeah, they take us to the hospital. They called. It was poor murder. What was that like? It wasn't no hospital. It was just a barrack, exactly like the other ones. And they'd say, go lay down, go to sleep, and rest. That's it. You got no medicine. That's why I say, some of that stuff we see on TV, it's not like that. It's not as a big old fake that's what it is some of it I mean it's not what the people tell them I think it's who rolls the film that makes it look better you know they have hair and they have scarves and all of none of that none of it but we made it did when they took you to the hospital, or did they ever try to do any experiments with you? Did they measure your head, or look in your teeth, or do anything like that? Heck, you wouldn't tell him if you had a toothache? Never. They pull all your teeth out before they pull one, the one that hurts. Did you know of, of any place where they did medical experiments on any of the prisoners? I heard about that. Did you? What did you hear and what did you see? I heard that they, <clears throat> they take their, their, their eyes and stuff and, you know, like, but I, I, what did I know? I was too little. 
I and no, didn't know. nothing like that happened to you. Then. No. Do you remember? Were you ever guarded by dogs? Yeah. Tell about that. Well, when they when we were working, getting the grass, we were guarded by dogs. You don't think the SS would stand there and watch us? Uh. You were scared to do anything. Those dogs with those big old teeth scared you half to death. Did ever any dog ever hurt you? No. Did you see anybody ever hurt? I, w I was scared. Yeah, I saw them hurt. I saw one woman got the whole back of her leg pulled out. Just bit her and told, pull, pulled the whole thing out. Well, Anything else that you remember that you can describe or give witness to? I don't remember nothing. You are asking me all the questions. <laughs> What kept you going, Mrs. Jackson? What kept me going is a whole loaf of bread and take all the soft part out and fill it up with butter and jelly, eat it, and then be dead. That's what I kept me going. And you know, when I could have it, I didn't eat it. And my family, to see my family, you said you did pray. Did you pray as a group together, or did you pray by yourself? Well, mostly I prayed by myself, because we couldn't pray in front of them. Mostly I prayed to myself. Is there anything else that you remember about the camps that you want to tell about? Not right now. What was the worst part for you? The worst part? The worst part for me was when I remembered my father's saying to me, say, Lena, any time you are away from home, any time, and you can't find yourself around, you know, any of us, just say, please, dear Jesus, help me and guide me to my family. And he did. That was the best part or the worst part? That was the worst part. The best part is when I found them. I imagined I'd find them. <laughs> well, you told us about the, the Americans coming. After they came, did you get any medical treatment then after the Americans came? Yes. What was that like? I had pneumonia bad, and they gave me, gave me some shots. And then what happened? And then I was well again and took off like a little bumblebee. <laughs> did they uh, ask you or did they take you to a displaced persons camp? Uh, no, because in Takao, they had it. They went, the Americans lived there where the Germans lived. Where the Germans lived. And uh, that's where they took us. And it didn't took very much to make us well then. Tell you, we got those shots and there we was. What kind of shape were you in physically and emotionally at that time? You know, I don't even know why in the heck I'm still alive. They tell you the truth. There wasn't nothing left of me except bones, skin, and arteries, and that was it. There was nothing left. I don't know how I made it. Then when we saw each other, my sisters and my father, and oh, it was wonderful. Tell about that. It was so wonderful. When I saw my father for the first time, I didn't know what to do. Cry, scream, or what? First, it been a long time with my father. He was gone when I was just a little kid. But I remembered him just that way, too. And he cried. 
We got and one of my sisters wasn't in the concentration camp. Where was she? She was in Romania hiding with her family. Well, how did you find your family? Well, when when we got out of the concentration before we even went, my father he he heard something. And he said, if anything ever happens, as we are separated, go to Quedlinburg. My brother lives there. And then we find each other. That's, you know. Well, when we got there, when I got there. How did you get there, first of all? Hitchhike. Nobody touched me. I was just a little skinny-looking kid. Nobody you know, when I showed them this this number, they really didn't. They helped me. How far was it from where you were to where you were going? Oh my goodness, it's the Bavaria and I had to go to Hessen. Pretty far. How many days did it take you? A week. And you were by yourself? But I found other people then too that wanted to go that way. So we just all stuck together. And then the 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 farmers your back hurts. Why don't you sit there? No, no, I'm fine. Uh, the farmers they told us that we could stay in their house and sleep. And did you? Yeah. And they fed you? Yeah. And we could take a bath. All they, t all you had to do is say, "Where are you coming from?" Oh, I was in the concentration camp, and they treated us like a queen. And then, did you, when you got to your uncle's, did you find your father? No, my father just left. That happened to me twice. He just, he just, oh, your dad just left a few days ago. So my uncle wouldn't let me leave. He said no. You stay right here. So I stayed there for two months. And I told him, I said, well, two months, that's enough. He wouldn't let me go, I just snuck away. Where were you going? I didn't know where I was going. I just went towards Bavaria. Because my uncle said that my aunt is there. And I thought, well, maybe my dad is there. I got to Hanover. And she, my aunt, said, he just left a few days ago. Oh, my God. Well, this was something, though, how I found it. I tell you, I was in the bottom. Uh, what do you call those those things that are underneath it? The trains that go underneath the... Like a subway? Yeah, like a subway. I was underneath there, sleeping. And... Uh, that lady comes up to me and she said, are you any relation to our light? And I said, yes. I said, that's my aunt. And I started crying. And she said, well, honey, she lives right here. So she wrote it down for me and I out I went and did not know that they had curfew. And I just run, you know, looking for streets, and there comes the MP. What are you doing, little girl? I said, I'm trying to find my aunt. She said, do you, uh, you know it's uh, curfew time? I said, no. I must have looked pitiful. <laughs> and uh, here. He took me in there, he and another man, another MP. They took me up to my aunt's. You and told him, how did, how did they know your aunt? Did you know where she lived? I didn't, I had it written down the street. So, I, she, they took me there and uh, that was a great big house, bombed, all bombed. Well, why did that woman say that to me, you know? Why would she do, do that? And I just stood there and I said, 
down to all the lights, real loud, you know. And I saw a little light going on all the way in the back. There was a couple rooms that were still standing, and they were living there. So I stayed with her for a few months. <laughs> and she got the, my father wasn't there again. So my father, she said, you are staying here and you ain't going nowhere till your dad comes and gets you. So I stayed there until my dad came and he finally came. Oh boy, that was a happy day. I couldn't get enough being around him, I tell you. He must have thought I'm stupid. Didn't have a dad for so long, you know. So nice. I was just asking if, about some other things that you might have remembered, Lena, but let's go back now to uh, when you found your father. What did he tell you about what had happened to him? Oh, my. He told me that he witnessed a woman, a SS woman, saw a man with a big butterfly on his back and chest, and she had it removed, pulled the skin off, and had herself a lampshade made. A lampshade? Yeah. I told him, I said, well, how did she do that? She knew that was a human being. She said, honey, they don't care what you are there. Terrible. Isn't, can you imagine that? I could never do it. Did he tell you, uh, that you had mentioned earlier he was Buchenwald. Was he in Buchenwald all of that time that you were separated from him? Yes. Did he tell you what kind of jobs he had to do or what things he had to do? No, he never did. He never did. Was he liberated from uh, Buchenwald? Mm -hmm. He was there for four years. Did you, ha any other members of your family, what happened to your sister? Amanda. Amanda? Well, she ran away from home. I mean, she ran away from from the train. And the next thing I knew is I saw her in Bavaria, Biden Overfalls with my sister. With another sister? Yeah, Hedwig. The sister that was in, in, uh, in Czech... Czech Czechoslovakia, <laughs> I can't say that. That's where she was. She was with my sister, slept. And she, my sister had one, two, three, four children. And Amanda went to her place then? Yeah. Did Amanda tell you what happened to her after she left you? Yes. She said this, uh, she found <coughs> out that Excuse if me. she goes back, does I have to be the one who buries her? She said, and she wanted to come back to be with me, but she couldn't do that because she said that would have really killed me to go back and dig a grave for her. I think I would have been dead then if I had to do that, really. Did she tell you if anybody helped her or how she yeah, got? she said some old German woman took her in and she told her all about that. And she said, you just stay here, and we put you in the basement. They made a nice bed down there and everything, and brought the food down there and everything. They helped her. Is Amanda still living? Yes. Where does she live? In Germany, some, somewhere. Are you in contact with her? No. I lost their address. That's what my son is trying to do, my Patrick, is to, to get, you know, to the towns and find out all their names and find out where they live. Did you learn about any others in your family then? Well, I have still a brother 
and uh, two sisters left out of seven. And where, where do they, what are their names and where do they live? Well, uh, my one sister is Hedwig. She lives in Han Hanover. Are you in contact with her? No. And then <coughs> I have uh, a brother, Georg. He's in Nuremberg. I thought that's where they were when I knew, you know. And then I wonder. I don't know. That's it. Well, tell me then what happened after you found your father. Then what happened to you? Well, I stayed with my sister. I didn't go with my father. Where did he go? He went to uh, Bavaria, to Weiden Oberpfalz. And what did he do there, do you know? Because he found, uh, see, my, my father been without a, a woman for so long. So he met that that lady, you know, and they got married. And what is her name? Huh? Do you remember her name? Rosa. Uh, that would be Steinbach was her last name then? Yeah. Or did she have a different last name before she... Did you know her name before he married her? Well, I, I forgot what her la other last name is. Housinger or something like that. She had two children. Did you ever go with any of the uh, other gypsy part of your family or observe any gypsy customs or anything no, like that? that's what I say. That we all just normal people. And then you stayed with your sister, and tell me what you did. How did you support yourself, and what did you do? Well, I wanted a job, and my sister said, no way, because I'm going to work. And I said, well, I, don't, I can't go to school, because I, I just went to school two years. And she said, we hire somebody to, to teach you, you know, because I was too old. I was embarrassed to go to school. How old were you then? Let's see, it was 45 yeah. at that. 16, 17. And I was embarrassed. And she said, we hired somebody. And that man just went on my nerves. He kept saying, starting with the numbers I knew already, A, B, C, you know. And I said, no, I, I don't know that. I know that. Well, we have to teach it again. I said, well, forget it. Go home. So what I learned now, as I learned from my children, the English, the everything, they teach me. And then did you get a job after that? No. I took care of my sister's children while she went to work. I cleaned the house, I cooked, and I took care of the children. She said she rather has me than they have somebody else. And then you were a young girl. Did you start to date at that time and meet young men? I never dated. I was scared. I was afraid. Every time I, somebody said, hey, pretty girl or something, I was hiding. So... I didn't date anybody until I met my husband. Where did you meet him? In Weiden, when I went to see my dad. Oh, well, tell about that. Mm -hmm. You went to see your dad. And I saw him in, at the carnival. And he said, where do you live? I answered him in Germany. I, in German, I said, none of your business. <laughs> well, you're talking about somebody being strict. That's my dad. He's strict. I, uh, well, he followed me all the way to the carnival, and he said, every time I paid, tried to pay for my tickets, he already paid for them. And I got mad at him. I told him, I said, I got my own money. Just let me pay for my own. And he just laughed. 
He wouldn't let me. Well, all that day long, he followed me around, smiling. I said, stop that, will you? He said, uh-uh. And he told his friend Johnny, he said, I'm going to marry this girl. And Johnny said, you're crazy. She's more than 15. He said, no, she's older than that. So Johnny bid him $50 that she would not marry me because I'm too young. He had to pay him the $50. <laughs> He had to pay him the $50. And, and was your husband from Germany then? No, Richard is American. He was in the Army. And he was living there then in? No, he was in the Army. Right, but I mean, he was living there. in Germany at the, yeah. he was with the Armed Forces mm -hmm. there. And tell about then, uh, how did you, uh, you m met him and you didn't ever go date anybody else? You married him. No, Richard was the only one. And you were married then in Germany? We got married in Germany. Uh, well, tell about that. What kind of wedding did you have? Oh, boy. We had a wedding and a half. We had uh, a beautiful wedding. Richard rented the whole guest house for that day and that night. And we had, they had all those kinds of drinks. I never drink. I never did. So they had all kinds of things, and, you know, we had lemonade or whatever they had, and they drank punch. And I remember <laughs> my old landlady, she said, Ooh, I like this, she said that big bowl of punch with all that fruit in it, you know. And she didn't know that was full of whiskey, too, or whatever that was. And she ate all that fruit out of there and was drink. She was so drunk she didn't couldn't stand anymore. And Richard said, he, she said, how do I got drunk? I never eat, no, never drink nothing. He, she said, well, that's because you ate the fruit, and the fruit sucked all the, the liquor out of it. She could gunk it up. <laughs> was your father th at your wedding then? Uh, no, my father was sick. Oh. And see, when the papers came in for us to get married, we had to get married. And he was in the hospital. But we took a lot of pictures and stuff, and we went up to the hospital. So he got to see that. Did he make it? Was he okay then after that? Yeah. He didn't want me to get married to Richard. He said that I should not get married because he's afraid that if I ever go to the United States, he never sees me again. He was right. We went back one time. And you saw him? I saw him. It took some time to get here, back to the U.S. then, for you? Well. We, uh, after we uh, got married, we had to uh, get all the papers together and everything, and then the packers came and packed all our stuff, and whoosh, there we went in the, in the uh, Hanover. No, uh, where, where was that? Bremerhaven. That's where it was, and there. Uh, it went to Bremerhaven and we went on the ship. And boy, I tell you, I was sick like a dog. I mean, I was sick. Bad. Do you remember the name of the ship? S.S. Washington. I Did never you? forget it. <laughs> Did you have children by that time? I had Bill, Jim, Rose, and pregnant with Pat. And Bill and Jim are the, uh, who's the oldest? Bill and Jim? There's just a half an hour between them. They are twins. And then your daughter? Rosie. 
How many days were you on the ship? Ten days. Six, 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 six. We was. And my husband said, oh, my God, he said, look what, you, what, I, what I did to you. You're pregnant and sick and everything else. And, and, but you, the war, that wasn't all that bad, you know. I, I, Any time something is moshing, I get kind of sick in my stomach. But the problem was, when I came to the United States, I thought, I don't know what I thought, what this country is like. I thought maybe the streets are painted with gold or something, you know? And it was just like German. Where did you land? Uh, New York. Did you stay there then? We stayed overnight. And then where did you go? To Canada. Was uh, Richard still on the service? Yeah. I don't think you gave us his name. What what was your husband's whole name? Richard. His name is Richard and uh, Jackson. Jackson. And uh, we went to uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, I think. Yeah. That's where we went. His family lived there. And we stayed with them for 15 days. And then we went to Indiana. That's did, where he was stationed. Did he get discharged in the, from the service at that time? No. He was still in the in the army. And uh, he went there. Uh, from there we was in, in Indiana for a, a year. Then we went to Colorado Springs. And we were stuck with it because we loved it. It it reminded me so much of Germany. The mountains and all of that, you know. It just I just loved it there. And we moved there. Then Richard went to Vietnam, no, Korea. And I was alone with the children. In Colorado Spring? Yeah. And I couldn't speak very good English. I called my husband stupid for for two years, and I didn't know what it meant. I did. He wouldn't tell me. Is he sleeping? <laughs> no. For two years, and I t finally a girlfriend of mine said, "Do you know what you call him?" I said, "Yeah, honey." She said, "No. You you call him." He's crazy. Oh, I could have killed him. He said, well, anybody with their right mind would know you didn't know. So You had other children then? Yeah. You said you were pregnant with Patrick, and then Patrick. did you have other children? Patrick was born in Indiana. I forgot to tell you that. He was born in Indiana. And then other children did you have? And then I had Tommy in in Colorado Springs. And any other children? And Katie in Colorado Springs. Yeah, that's it then. Oh, Nancy, she was born in Colorado too. How many children altogether do you have? I have four sons and four daughters. How, where else did you live after Colorado Springs? How long were you in Colorado Springs and then? Well, when, when we came back, we, uh, we lived in Colorado Springs for a while, and then Richard got out of the army. And then we went to, uh, Richard went to lab technician school, became a lab technician. And then we went to Rangeley, Colorado, we got a job there. But then somebody told us, well, the town is too little and they're going to close the hospital. So Richard said, we can have that with all our kids, you know. So we went to uh, Coldwater, Kansas, and we lived there for three years. For, we bought our home and everything, 
and lived there, and they said the same thing. That little hospital, you know, they have to, they're going to close it up. They have to go to Rangeley, to, uh, to Vernal, Utah. So here we went, moved here, and that's we've been here ever since. What year was that? Yeah, well, it's a uh, my Rosie, my Katie was twelve, and she's twenty eight now. And you live here at that. What kind of work did Richard do here then? He was the lab technician at the hospital, and everybody loved him. They called me. Is Richard working today? Yeah, well, I go and get my blood taken. <laughs> Did you ever work outside the home? No, I babysit. For your own kids or for other kids? For other kids. I, every child in this town, I swear to you, one way or another, I took care of it. They come... Now, that, uh, yesterday we went to the drawing. They have a, a, a drawing here for Christmas drawing, you know. for You buy a dollar's worth, you get a stamp, you put it in there. And uh, the little girl came up to me and she said, Hi, sweetie, how are you doing? I looked at her and I said, Who are you? I couldn't believe it. She was this little, Stephanie. And now she's taller than me. I mean, big, beautiful, blonde girl. I couldn't believe it. Such a beautiful little girl, you know, turning into a young lady. Are all of your children, uh, do they live in Wheeler? No. My Nancy, she lives in uh, Missouri. Uh, Terry and Katie, the two babies, live here. Rosie lives in uh, in uh, uh, Will you believe this? I'm stuck. What is that next big town here? In Texas? Yeah. No, it's not in Texas. It's out of Texas. Well... She lives there. And how about the boys? Where do the boys live? Uh, Patrick lives in in, the, in uh, New York, New Jersey. William lives in Texas. Um, Lubbock. Jimmy lives in... It's another one I'm stuck. His son is up there in the, in the Air Force. I think about it, and I tell you, that's it, and Tommy is dead. Tommy is... He died. What happened to Tommy? Well, he was working, he was in the Army, and then he got out. And uh, he... Uh, oh, that's hard to talk about. He, uh, he worked with his friend... You know, they were moving big objects off of the truck and on the truck at school, at the high school. And he told him, he said, don't try to get that off by yourself. Wait a minute, I help you. No, he had to wait. He had to do it. So he pulled that big box and Tommy ran over there and pushed him out of the way. And he, he got killed. What year was that? Five years ago. Is your husband still alive? Mine? Your husband? No. My husband died three years ago. He had cancer. And some of your kids are married. They're all married, every one of them. How many child, grandchildren, or do you have any grandchildren? I have 14 grandchildren, five great-grandchildren, <laughs> and eight, seven children now. 
Did any one of the kids or your grandchildren ever ask about your experiences during the war? Yeah. I don't tell them like for you, like I do to you, you know. I just tell them it wasn't no good. Bad. Have your grandchildren asked you? Mm-hmm. Has anybody asked you what the number is? My grandchildren. What do you tell them? I tell them that's... I got this in the concentration camp. Why was you in the concentration camp? I tell them. What do you tell them? I mostly tell them because they said, the Germans said we wasn't full blood German. But we were born and raised there from great, great, great parents. And, you know, they wanted a full-blooded German, blonde, blue eyes, and look what they got now. Do you think what happened to you during your childhood in the camps affected the way you raised your children? Yeah, I think it is. I'm very protective with my children. Very, very. I gotta go without it and let them have it. It's, you know, I know my children are important. Like J- uh, Jimmy, uh, Christy's dad, my youngest brother-in-law. I love that boy just like he is. I don't see no different in family. They're nice people. And I thank God I found them. Do you have any long-term effects, either physically or emotionally, from your experiences in the concentration camp? Sometimes. Sometimes I think about it and kind of makes me sad, you know. Wonder what my little brother would have been like or what would happen. But it's usually times like this. I think to myself, how come I went through all of this? You know, why? It didn't help nobody. Nobody. Do you have any physical effects from the... uh, Oh, yes. Yes. Camps. I got open heart surgery all the way down there. Look at my legs. How swollen they are. And I can't even walk on them anymore, barely. I got the, I got a lot of stuff from that conversation camp, and a lot of doctors told me, Dr. Barbara and Dr. Mineola, they all told me it has something to do for being in the conversation camp, for being so undernourished and all of that, you know, just all one thing. Do the, your neighbors and uh, friends in Wheeler know about your experiences? Have you ever told them? Well, I don't say nothing to nobody. If they ask me, I give them, you know, I tell them. Do you tell them it was because you were part gypsy? Or what do you tell them? I just don't say nothing. I say when they ask me, I give them the question. But when they ask you, why were you in the concentration camp, what do you answer? Because I wasn't full blood German. Do you have any, have any dreams or nightmares as a result? Yeah, very bad. In terms of your physical condition and so forth, what did you weigh or do you know when you were liberated? That's when I got out of the concentration camp. Well, what do you think of? A five-year-old would weigh, or a four-year-old, just skin bones. That's all I was. Like, do you know what those uh, scars look like? 
Well, I looked almost like that. About how much do you think weight-wise? Just a little, maybe 50 pounds or 30 pounds. Now that 50 years have passed or more mm -hmm. since the war was over, what would you say to those who say the Holocaust didn't happen? I don't wish anything bad to them, and I don't wish it on nobody. But I think they should think twice before they say it. And if they ever go there, I hope they have God on their side. I really do. Is there any message that you want to leave for your children or grandchildren or for the rest of the world that you would like to say about your experiences? Well, all I have to say is I am so happy and I thank God that I got my wonderful children and grandchildren great-grandchildren, and daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws, and my husband's family. I'm very happy for all of them. And I hope nobody have to go through this again, not ever. And you, as long as you got God on your side, nothing can happen to you. Is there anything I've forgotten to ask you about or anything you want to tell about? I don't know. I probably think about it after you leave. <laughs> well, I really want to thank you so much for your hospitality, for inviting us into your home, and for giving your testimony for the Shoah Foundation. I'm glad to do it. Me. Oh. What is this picture, please? That's a, a picture of my little brother. His name? Carl. Did he have any other names? Good. No. No, we used to call him Capitano. Okay. That means he is a, a captain, you know, because he always wanted to be a captain. And oh, when did he die? In the concentration camp. How old was he? Around five. Okay. I'm not my sweater. Okay, up here. And this picture? This is my oldest brother. His name is Kurt. And how did you get this picture? My sister had it when she went to uh, uh, Czechos Czechoslovakia. <laughs> and did he make it through the camps? No, he didn't. And he got killed. That other picture that before that we showed. Oh, of the little one. What was this? Your, was Walter. Walter. And um, I'm how sorry. Did, how I did get you get Walter's picture? She had that. She gave us each a picture. Okay. Okay. And this picture? This is our wedding picture. And who is your husband? That's my husband, Richard. And last name? Jackson. Okay. We're not, I'm not going to bother. This is my father, the one with the fishing rod. This, this picture been taken in Germany. And tell me his name, please. His name is Adolf Steinbach. Okay. He always tried to... And what's this picture? Huh? What is this picture? My children. And where, were, what, where was it taken? on SS Washington, on the ship, when we came from Germany to Ame to New York. And who are the little boys on the left? Where? On the bottom. Oh, those are, that's my William, and that's Jimmy. And who's the woman on the right? Me, with girls in my hair. <laughs> and who's, who are you holding there? My Rosemary. Okay. 
I told my husband it's dirty. He said, well, that's okay. What is this then? The menu of, of the ship when we came from Germany to the United States. Okay. I don't know if you want. Can you get, get the blackboard? What's this picture? The picture is, uh, we was stationed in Indiana and we all went swimming. And there's Bill and Jim and Rosemary and Patrick was just born. Can't you tell? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, this picture? This picture is, we were stationed in Germany in, uh, uh, Forget it. And my husband and I are right, right there on the right. Okay. Gießen. Oh, Gießen, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming into the lake with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is my husband, Richard. He was in Vietnam. He's. He passed away, he had cancer. And this one? This is my son Patrick. He's the youngest now since Tommy died. And his wife Nancy and his son Michael. Okay. And who's this? This is my daughter, Nan, uh, Terry. She okay. If you want to. And this picture? This is my daughter, Nancy, and her husband, Russell. And my granddaughter, Rachel, and my grandson, Greg. Okay. Okay. This is my oldest daughter. Her name is Rosemary. Her son's name is B Bill. And the daughter is Crystal. And the son is Richie. Wait, who's the husband? Bill. And the son is? Richie. Okay. This one? Uh, this one is one of the twins, Jim. And uh, that's my son, Jim. And this is his wife, Barney. And his little son, Jeremy. And his daughter, Nimi. Okay. This one? This is my son, Tom. He was in the army then, but he passed away since then. My youngest. Okay. This is my baby. Her name is Katie. And she lives right next door to me. <laughs> I love her very much. Okay. And this one? This is my Kayla. And she is the most beautiful child, I think. <laughs> okay. Whose yeah. daughter is this? This is Katie's daughter. Okay. And this is? This is my granddaughter, Crystal. Whose child is that? Uh, Rosemary, she is the, el the oldest daughter. Okay. Now, just my two boys. Do we have this one? Rachel, no, we never have. And this picture? And this is, they are my great-grandchildren. And, uh... Which one is, has the hat on? 
The one with the hat on is Jacob, and the other one is Matthew. And whose children are these? My granddaughter, Crystal.